I'm Matt Griffith, and today we're in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is an awesome city to come to. It's very historic, lots of monuments to see, lots of museums, and a zoo. And it's a food lover's paradise. And best of all, most of the attractions are free. We're here by the Death Star. I mean, Telstar. We're at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, and this is one of my favorite places. I'm a pilot and this just kind of fits me. The other cool thing is, it's free. The museum contains the Apollo 11 Command Module Columbia, the Friendship 7 capsule which was flown by John Glenn, Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, the Bell X-1 which broke the sound barrier flown by Chuck Yeager, and the Wright Brothers 1903 Wright Flyer near the entrance. So there's a lot of interactive exhibits here, such as the Skylab Orbital Workshop that you can actually walk through. There's also a flight director across the way. There's just a lot of things for kids, adults, and us big kids. Now think about the Bell X-1 for just a minute. It was October 14th, 1947. Yes, 1947. Chuck Yeager was just 24 years old at the time. He broke the sound barrier and flew at an altitude of 45,000 feet. He then went on to break several other speed and altitude records. And you can actually see this aircraft here. Amazing. A side note, Chuck Yeager and I are from the same state just 25 miles apart. And while he lives on the opposite side of the country from me now, I would absolutely love to meet him one day. Almost all space and aircraft on display are originals or the original backup craft. Thousands of additional artifacts including engines, rockets, uniforms, space suits, balloons, artwork, documents, manuscripts, and photographs document the richness of the history of flight. Also at the Air and Space Museum are flight sims. They cost $8. They're so cool because you actually feel everything and it almost feels like you're really in the cockpit. The National Museum of African American History and Culture opened its doors on September 24th, 2016, and has become one of the more busier places here in National Mall in Washington, D.C. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is yet another Smithsonian Institution Museum which opened its doors on September 24, 2016 in a ceremony led by U.S. President Barack Obama. The above ground floors feature an inverted step pyramid surrounded by a bronze architectural scrim. This museum makes light of our past blemishes and scars as humans on society and our fellow man, revealing the travesties that took place in history in the U.S. The museum has about 85,000 square feet of exhibition space with 12 exhibitions, 13 different interactives with 17 stations, and 183 videos housed on five floors. The museum is beautifully designed and has become one of the most popular museums in D.C. since its opening with more than 35,000 objects in their collection and roughly 3,500 of those on display. In the collection are items related to such subjects as community, family, the visual and performing arts, religion, civil rights, slavery, and segregation. 
Some of the more notable items in the collection include a Bible owned by Nat Turner, a trumpet owned by jazz musician Louis Armstrong, Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves, a cherry red Cadillac convertible owned by singer Chuck Berry, and the dress Rosa Parks was sewing on the day she refused to give up her seat on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. But there's so much more. And if you get hungry, the Sweet Home Cafe is a 400 seat luncheon only restaurant located inside the museum. Throughout National Mall, there's all these great maps that tell you where things are, so you can find all the various museums here with the Smithsonian. This is the creamiest crab cake I've ever had, and I think it's actually the best one I've ever had. We're at Founding Farmers, and this uh, has like a mustard in it, and it's really good. Uh, it's just really creamy, uh, not dry like a lot of crab cakes. Uh, I think this is my favorite. Those were really good crab cakes, but I said that already. Ah, the food. In a big melting pot city like Washington, D.C., you can expect to find every category and ethnicity of food you could imagine. It's a food lover's destination and this foodie gives it a big check mark and a thumbs up. We're at the Old Ebbett Grill, the oldest bar and grill in Washington, D.C. It's been here since 1856. It's just down the street from the White House, so it's known for politicians and actors alike to come visit. And it's also known for its oysters. We're outside of Don Chicho and Fiji, and uh, they've got some of the best spirits you're going to taste here in Washington, D.C. So everything we do here, based on a family distillery from the Amalfi Coast, uh, established in 1883, was the first rendition that operated until 1931, which closed due to the economic crisis before World War II, uh, reopened in 1951, uh, and then closed down again in 1980 due to an earthquake, uh, the earthquake of Europinia in the south of Italy in 1980, 6.9 magnitude earthquake. Wow, that's, that's, that's crazy big. Yeah. So what eventually brought it over here? Yeah, so uh, Francesco Amadeo, he moved here about 14 years ago now. Um, very common um, for you know him there in the hospitality industry to bring his skills here. So he worked in the hospitality industry, sommelier, beverage director, and as beverage directors do, he started to produce a lot of his own uh, cordials, uh, liqueurs behind the bar. And the primary one being the limoncello really caught the attention of a lot of people. Just, uh, less sugary, um, you know, a bit more balanced, clean, fresh, bright. Um. So how do you go about making it less sugary than the, like other limoncellos that we might try? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so really, if you look at alcohol content, is the number one thing. So a lot of limoncellos, cordials, liqueurs tend to be you know 35, sometimes 45 percent alcohol. With that much alcohol, you need a lot of sugar. Um, to mask that flavor. Cover that all yep, up. Exactly, right. kind of hide it. Yeah. So we keep things around 25%, 23%. Highest that we go is 29. So with that level of alcohol, sugar content low, and being from the Amalfi Coast originally, you know, we want to highlight the flavors, the ingredients. But how many of the ingredients are kind of local versus shipped over? Um, so we actually source all of our ingredients domestically. Um, most of our citrus and fresh fruits and vegetables coming from California. Um, so the walnuts, the uh, oranges, lemons, artichokes, all from California. And then we get our fennel and our dill and our mint from Pennsylvania and Maryland. The only thing that comes over from Italy is the espresso. So. You know, being Italian, very right. particular about coffee. Other than that, I guess the imported products, products would be our uh, machinery, our equipment, uh, and then our French oak barrels that we have in the back. Those originally came from the Amalfi Coast as well, from the Marissa Cuomo Winery. If you were to choose one in your personal favor as a recommendation, what would that be? That's a, that's a tough question. <laughs> as Francesco says, you know, they're all like our kids. Right. So, all the babies. Um, but just like in real families, someone has a favorite, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So my personal favorite, maybe it's because of the uniqueness, the quirkiness, uh -huh. um, 
but the fennel liqueur. And you're moving soon too, right? Yeah, we hope to move uh, closer to the rest of the distilleries in Ivy City. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, you can check us out here, 6031 Kansas Avenue, uh, Kansas and Blair Road, Upper Northwest DC. Um, it's been our home since day one and uh, we love it here. All the monuments in DC are within walking distance, but be sure to have good shoes on because there's a lot to see. The Korean War Veterans Memorial memorializes those who served in the Korean War with 19 stainless steel, larger-than-life statues, each weighing nearly a thousand pounds. The black granite mural wall has more than 2,500 photographic archival images representing the land, sea, and air troops who supported those who fought in the war. The Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial covers four acres and includes the Stone of Hope, a granite statue of Martin Luther King. The inspiration for the memorial design is a line from King's I Have a Dream speech, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial is dedicated to the memory of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, and to the era he represents. Spread over seven and a half acres, it traces 12 years of the history of the United States through a sequence of four outdoor rooms, one for each of FDR's terms of office. Sculptures inspired by photographs depict the 32nd President alongside his dog Fala. Other sculptures depict scenes from the Great Depression, such as listening to a fireside chat on the radio and waiting in a breadline. A bronze statue of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt standing before the United Nations emblem honors her dedication to the UN. It is the only presidential memorial to depict a First Lady. Considering Roosevelt's disability, the memorial's designers intended this to be accessible to those with various physical impairments. The Jefferson Memorial is dedicated to Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers, and as the main drafter and writer of the Declaration of Independence, member of the Continental Congress, governor of the newly independent Commonwealth of Virginia, first U.S. Secretary of State under the first President George Washington, the second Vice President of the United States under second President John Adams, and also the third President, as well as being the founder of the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. The World War II Memorial is dedicated to Americans who served in armed forces during World War II and consists of 56 granite pillars, each 17 feet tall, arranged in a semicircle around a plaza with two 43-foot triumphal arches on opposite sides. Each pillar is inscribed with the name of one of the 48 U.S. states of 1945, as well as the District of Columbia, Alaska and Hawaii, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Washington Monument is the world's tallest stone structure, standing more than 555 feet tall, commemorating the first president, George Washington. The Lincoln Memorial was built to honor the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. It is located on the western end of the National Mall across from the Washington Monument. It has always been a major tourist attraction and since the 1930s has been a symbolic center focused on race relations and since 2010, Approximately six million people visit the memorial every year. So in DC today, it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 11 degrees Celsius. And I always dress in layers. So I have a long sleeve shirt that has buttons on the side where I can roll the sleeves up if I want. I have a solid collar tee underneath, and that allows me to unbutton my shirt to let it vent out a little bit if I need to, or I can just take the outer shell completely off. So it allows me to accommodate for many different temperatures and allows me to pack lighter because of that. We're in front of the National Gallery of Art. And it's one of the Smithsonian Museums, and the best way to think about it is it's the United States version of the Louvre. Come on, let's go. The National Gallery of Art and its attached sculpture garden is open to the public and free of charge.
The detail in some of these is absolutely amazing. You look at the horses and the people, the detail is just so fine. And to think that this was painted back in the early to mid 1800s. The gallery's collection of paintings, drawings, prints, photographs, sculpture, medals, and decorative arts traces the development of Western art from the Middle Ages to the present, including the only painting by Leonardo da Vinci in the Americas and the largest mobile created by Alexander Calder. The National Gallery of Art consists of two buildings and this amazing outdoor sculpture garden. We're here in DC's Chinatown, and this kind of lets you experience a different culture in our nation's capital. There's lots of restaurants, and even some of the businesses like Starbucks and Walgreens have their signs in Chinese. It's a pretty cool place. Chinatown in Washington, DC is a small historical neighborhood east of downtown, consisting of about 20 ethnic Chinese and other Asian restaurants and small businesses along H&I streets between 5th and 8th streets northwest. It is known for its annual Chinese New Year festival and parade and the Friendship Arch, which is a Chinese gate built over 8th street at 7th street. Other nearby prominent landmarks include the Verizon Center, a sports and entertainment arena, and the old patent office building which houses two of the Smithsonian Museums, the National Portrait Gallery and the Smithsonian American Art Museum. The neighborhood is served by the Gallery Place Chinatown Station of the Washington Metro. Hey, we're outside of Three Star Brewing Company, which is a Washington DC craft brewing company all the way through. Uh, this is the brew house here. The brew house is uh, about a year old now. We, we added it just recently. We brew 20 barrels at a time on there, so about 600 gallons of beer get brewed uh, at a time on that on that system. We'll walk down through the cellar, check out the Funker Dome, and then we walk next door as well. The Funker Dome. Yeah. Now you can smell it back here. Yeah, so you start getting a little more of like the aromas of beer in here. This is the cellar. The cellar is where all the fermentation happens. We brew on that main system. Everything gets sent back here. Uh, we do all ales here, so ales from about 65 to 70 degrees for about, about two weeks back here. All right, so the Funker Dome our sour production. Basically all these barrels are a mix of whiskey and wine barrels and uh, beer sitting here from anywhere from a few months to multiple years. Where do you guys get your barrels from? Uh, barrels come from mixed places. Generally, I mean, obviously you get some direct from distilleries, so it may be sourced from other uh, other people. We did a collaboration with a Virginia distilling company down way out in Southern Virginia where they, we brought some barrel, freshly empty barrels back. We filled them with beer, aged them for a little while, and sent them back to them so they can do a kind of a beer whiskey hybrid thing, which is kind of fun. So they're yeah, cool. So you definitely get it from different places. Nice. Raw. You go over the least of this space, and as you can see, it's still very raw. Right, but it's and awesome. It's love. Um, but it's basically a space that we use for parties when we have big events here. We use it for that. Um, and then we have a hip hop show next Saturday here where we use that. So basically, this will be transformed um, by hopefully by the end of this year into a whole new space. Well, it's great. You know, it's one of those spaces that it's, you know, it's, it's very raw, but it's great for events. You can spill beer and it's not going to make a mess everywhere. You can clean up later and you know, not feel bad about a little stickiness here. Yeah, and that's how you have a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let's do that. <laughs> like We're at the... Uh, we're at the National Zoological Park that's part of the Smithsonian. Lots of animals inside, let's go see. The National Zoological Park, commonly known as the National Zoo, is one of the oldest zoos in the United States. It is part of the Smithsonian Institution and is free. Founded in 1889, its mission is to provide engaging experiences with animals and create and share knowledge to save wildlife and habitats. 
Here we have the panda in its unnatural habitat. Some of the popular exhibits include the giant panda habitat, elephant trails, lemur island, the great ape house, and the cheetah conservation station. The famous Smoky Bear, which was the living symbol of the cartoon icon created as part of a campaign to prevent forest fires, lived here until his death in 1976. The National Zoo hosts about 1,800 animals of 300 different species, of which one-fifth of them are endangered or threatened. The best known residents are the giant pandas, but the zoo is also home to birds, great apes, big cats, Asian elephants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, aquatic animals, small mammals, and many more. This 163-acre urban park is open every day of the year except for December 25th or Christmas Day. So that's been our trip to Washington, D.C. Our bellies are full, our feet are tired, even with great walking shoes. But we've had a chance to catch up on some history and experience the culture.